that at least every team here should have a chance. Like yeah. You are here for a reason. Like, for example, Archon, you know, people talk about DC being a good team and Complexity being a good team. Archon won the qualifier pretty handily, too. So I think it's pretty bad of people or commentators to just say, this team has 0% chance. Or, in Austin's words, this team is the worst team at the major. <laughs> like, those guys, the thing is, these guys are practicing hard and, you know, these weaker teams, like, I can say, you can say it comfortably, like, Archon's a weaker team. Mm -hmm. I was a sub for their team at one point and I played with Fluff, like, half of my Dota 2 life. So I don't think you would mind me saying this, that they're the underdog here, but... It, it's, they've been, they've been in this position before, like I remember what it was like with them at, at like an ESL 1 back when like IX Mike 88 was playing for these guys and like no one expected them to do any good and then they came out, they at least were creative, they came here to try and win and be like contenders and I respect the spirit of the team. Yeah, I mean these guys, these guys have absolutely nothing to lose, they're just playing to essentially you know, do the best that they can, use this as a learning opportunity, I know that Fluff always uses these moments as a learning opportunity. They have a lot of up-and-coming players. Uh, they've got Moo, who's personally one of my favorite players to watch. They've got uh, Monkeys Forever, who, you know, he was kind of meandering in those, like, that tier, like, two NA teams, like, Root at a time period and some other stuff. But now, you know, they're doing pretty well. I think they definitely face a tall test, though. Like, we haven't even talked about OG and how good they are as a whole. Like, these guys are pretty insane. Yeah. Uh, I know everyone was kind of like looking at them as one of the clear favorites coming into this tournament behind both EG as well as well, until day one eHome. Um, like their style, like they were able to take out Secret as well as EG. What I'm not going to say simply, but they did it very effectively at the last major. I'm interested to see if they bring the same form to this tournament as well. No, these guys are stupid scary. Make no mistake about it. They have one of the best captains, uh, slash Dota Mines. In Fly, they have probably one of the more respected cores in both Miracle and No Tail. An offlaner who's absolutely sick in Moon, and uh, Crit really proved himself at the Frankfurt Major as well. But probably was the best four position player there. So you've got these guys that are at the top or near the top of their positions, and it's a scary combination, honestly. I know a lot of people, the biggest question mark was No Tail as a core, switching from a support, but he's removed all doubts long ago whether or not he should be playing core. Like this guy. Absolutely terrifying to play against. Yeah, it used to only just be oh, no tells the Meepo player, right? Like that was his big thing. It was Meepo and Wisp, and yeah, you're right. He is he is definitely coming to his own. I OG though, like starting off this draft, you start with Lone Druid number one, and you give away two of I don't know if the most successful heroes, but they've definitely been some of the most effective heroes. Enchantress and Nature's Prophet. The early push, the early rotation, impetus damage, combo with faces for Corona kind of style. Like, Archon seem to have a pretty green start to their drafting phase. Yeah. I'm trying to... The Enchantress in general is one of the best heroes, I think, in this off, in this meta, just because she's a four-position hero, Toby. That It's not just that she's tanky and does a lot of damage. Those are very good things in its own, but uh -huh. it's that she enables other heroes in the offlane. And that's a concept that I think people should get used to, is that... She makes whatever offlaner you have or whatever mid hero you have better simply by being around. She can play the farm game if she wants, she can play the ganking game. This hero is an enabler at its best. Nature's Prophet is a hero that I personally, if I owned a compendium, would have put as the most picked of this tournament so people should get used to it. It's not just Alliance that run this hero as a niche pick anymore, it's everybody runs this guy. He's yeah. just flat out top three offlaner right now to pick. Yeah. Uh, it's... I, I personally love him. I became more of a fan of it during the MDL, like if I wasn't un, like enough of a fan of it at the time. But uh, uh, so we we go with a bat rider and a lone drawer from OG. How are they going to try and lane this? Because obviously, like you look to the lone drawer to the offlane, correct? But the bat rider has been switching, well, switching between offlane as well as mid. So where do you want to put this lone drawer for OG? Thank you. I'm not sure. I, I, f I thought for sure it would be a bat in the... Or it'd be a lone druid offlane. And... Then what, then how's the bat fit into it? Like, yeah, the only I mean. other option then is the mid lane, right? The bat is really good though against both the Enchantress and the Nature's Prophet. One of the better ways to deal with it. You can kind of mess with her, slow her down, ruin her turn speed, which really affects her when she's trying to chase heroes down. Mm -hmm. Um, think you put... Because I would really like to see Miracle play the game-changing role. 
I think you put this lone druid safe and this bat off. Or if they plan on being a typical team, then they put it uh, bat rider mid and lone druid off. Those are the two main options. Yeah. It seems a little safer just to throw the lone druid into the safe lane. Um, and then the bat rider into the off lane. But doesn't this, like, that could potentially leave you open for Archon to early push you? Like you get the Enchantress down the bottom lane, like slide him back behind the tower, apply a lot of pressure to Lone Druid. The Batrider can't rotate in to really help, and the Lone Druid, once he's lost that bear, or even just comes under siege, he's... Like, he needs some really solid supports to open up space. OG had first pick, so that means our contact Rainy, or Dire? Will be the assumption, yeah. OG, I think OG, if I remember correctly, they added a lot of Radiant strats. More than most teams, but we'll see. Archon, they still need they need some kind of uh, control factor as well in one of their cores or their supports. I'm trying to think of the heroes that are left over. Puck would be the first one that comes to my mind after all those mids got banned out. Yeah, Puck everything's be... pretty lean for the mid as far as selection goes. Puck would be pretty good, which might lend credence to the fact that Bat Bat's mid. Uh, Puck's pretty good. I'm trying to think of the other heroes that are available right now. Luckily, I can look at it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot, but I can look. I can cheat off your screen. Uh, for Archon, I don't. I don't really like DP. I feel like it. Well, you could just like push straight up. If, if, if Archon is going for the all-out push strat, like, wouldn't you want to have something like that? Or would you actually think more of like a tempo controller? You get something like a TA or a Queen of Pain into that mid lane, get a pick, and then go into a tower push. Okay. That is. It's a really good hero against Bat in the laning phase, and good against Lone Druid because of the uh, the feast on the the bear. But is Fluffbring actually bringing back the old the old uh, infest into profit to TP anywhere on the map kind of strat? I don't even think that's very good because you want the instant. Not you don't want it to because you want the damage in the infest as well, and you want him to be able to get on top of somebody instant. That's why heroes like Puck or what is the other one? Uh, Puck or Storm Spear works so well, because you could jump on directly on top of the person and give them no room to breathe. Mm -hmm. But if, you, if you're still, like, they could still do that, like, they could still run that Puck in the mid, push the life stealer to the safe lane. Unless Archon are considering, like, if, like, if, if you're a team that's behind, like, if Archon's sitting here going, okay, yes, we respect OG as a team of, like, like, they've achieved a lot more, maybe they've got superior skill. Do you then say, maybe we just have to try something aggressive, like we get ourselves down that bottom lane, you get in, th in the face with the Enchantress, you push the lifesteal against that safe lane lone druid, and you battle Archon like a tri like a, with an aggro tri lane. Like, is that still possible? Is that something Archon would consider? Maybe. You don't really have to aggro. You have an Enchantress, you can do whatever you want. OG is a team, though, that historically has relied on safe lanes, Toby. They want to be able to win as many lanes as they possibly can. Even the off lane, they try to give Mew or uh, Moon, Moo and Moon, <laughs> so off laners, a decent matchup, just so that he kind of gets to do what he wants in the mid game. But Archon still need, I think, some kind of control core, especially if you're going to deal with a Lone Druid Bat Rider, or you need something that can counter initiate. Oracle is still an option, deals well with the Bat Rider, absolutely demolishes him. I would have said Venge is probably the best support left in the pool, but and banned out. And she got taken out in the second phase. It's also reeks of a level one. With Prophet and Chan Lifestealer. What, level one Roche? Yeah, but you can't do that against a lone druid, right? Like, he's gonna scout it with the bear. I don't think you can get away with it. Uh, it would be ballsy if they tried it. You would need, like, plus one hero to do it. Unless, unless they play the ultimate bait, we're doing Roshan. But then you're all only going to kill off a player. But I don't even think their level 1 is very strong. Like, I feel like they bait level 1 Roshan, everybody from OG comes. Not sure. Okay, so there's one of your control factors, the Night Stalker. They needed a hero that uh, spotted out for the Bat Rider. This is a pretty good one, too. Removing vision from the Bat is the best way to play against it. And there's going to be a time period where OG are simply going to outmap maneuver them, I think. And mm -hmm. so you need a hero that can counter that. Bat's gonna get a gem and run around and deward everything. You need something that can deal with the counter vision. The concern though is is like your control factors. Like you don't really have like a permanent stun like between the sprout. Like you got a lot of slows on that lineup and one mini stun. 
that Team Archon, like, if you did have something like, do I dare say something like a Storm Spirit, which is going to, like, jump around you, like, they got no control against that. No, I'm pretty sure Storm is... Yeah, he's, he's not the hero. Terrible hero. hero. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... Earth Shaker. Even more control. Great D push. It's not just that. It's good against uh, both Enchant and P. You can set up for kills on the Nature's Prophet without having to commit to mid too much. Is it enough lane presence though? If you're running both the Earthshaker and Lion supports? It's, at, at this point we are assuming that's the case. You don't even know yet. The Earth, they have like two core positions filled out. The Earthshaker can still go like off and they can just play like a control meta. They have so much team fight right now. OG. I'm gonna be scared if I did too. What timing does it come online? I know you like you've talked about OG in the past of like they're this time they're this timing team like they win their laning phase and then they go into this exact win scenario. I'm not sure. Probably just like they have pretty stable push with the lone druid. They need probably one more hero that helps them accomplish that though. So I imagine that the Earthshaker's not a core one or a core position like a two or three. Okay. See though, they thought it was going to be the Razor. They need something else that can hit the tower on OG. And Archon need... Puck. There it goes. That okay, control that factor sucks. we were both thinking about. Uh, Puck would have been so good here. Yeah. If you are going to take it though, I think you would have taken it over the NS. Not sure. Yeah. Which the means NS... they got to have something else in mind then. The NS would have been so good though. Is there anyone else that like, they'll be looking to combo with the lifesteal? Like anyone who's got that nice quick jump? Um, TA's not terrible here. For that, but I think it'd be rough. Ten seconds remaining. I'm trying to think of the various years they could play around it. I'll just say Puck was by far the best. Yeah. Queen of Pain, I think, would be okay. It's too squishy. And... <laughs> okay, there, Archon's running at you. Uh, That's Jakiro. This is a pre practice strategy. You don't just run Jakiro. This reminds me of um, what the Finnish guys were doing with the Jakiro Enchantress dual offlane where they're just able to force down the building so early on and you, you put so much pressure on the safe laner there's no way to really fight against it because you're getting liquid fired on the tower then Prophet will just TP in huge army train so taking out the early tier 1 towers can be easy uh, pushing beyond that however depends probably more on the timing attack Brax and Cap right now are talking, and I hope Brax is watching. Hello, Brax. Uh, shout out to him, but he says this is the Jungle Book strat, where you just run at people, and Life Stealer hops into a big creep, and they all run at you. And once you see that Jakiro is like a core position, I think this becomes readily apparent. Brax, 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 Brax. I'm glad we're still getting inside information. I say inside when it was public, right? It was a tweet, though. Yeah. Rex is the best. He can do whatever he wants. Shout out to him. Alright, but is it going to be enough for Markon to beat OG? Like, OG finish up with the Weaver now? They seem to have this beautiful mid-game, like, strength in their lineup. But I'm not really feeling, like, the D-push if Archon do force the issue. Like, uh, how much damage are they going to take before they can start repelling Archon? I mean, you've got No-Tails Firefly. It is going to be a... Uh, I'd imagine that's... Oh, it's an offline weaver. It's a miracle... Druid. Oh, that Batrider looks like he's going safe. That was a weird set. On the Batrider? Yeah, his face looks odd. Wait, do I? He's going the safe lane. Alright, so the Sloan Druid's going mid. That means... They think it's going to be the NP. Or the enchant off. But it's a fluff and stuff nature's profit, so that is a hundred percent gonna be a support slash jungle NP. Mm-hmm. The timing for this NP I I've been playing around with it. I told Cap about it the other day. So I've been playing jungle NP in pubs. It's actually not terrible. Do you start though with like Iron Talon? Like because right now he's just obviously gone full support. No, I don't like Iron Talon. Because normally, like, if you're going a jungle prophet, remembering the old builds of Puppy, like, you get, like, something like a Ring of Basilius. Or you get a crap ton of clarities because your trains just die too quickly. I think Iron Talon is really good on cores and, like, Night Stalker. But I'm becoming sort of less enamored with that item in general. 
felt kind of silly. We should have seen that strat coming once they had the life stealer plus inch plus nature's profit. That was a bad job by us, Toby. You know, uh, we just read it wrong. Maybe it's just unfamiliarity with the NA scene, honestly. Thanks, Brax, for bailing us out. But bottom, no oh. tail's getting gone on, and he should be fine. He's only getting hit by the, by uh, liquid fire, so not actually leveling up dual breath as his first ability from the Jakira. I don't think it would have really made that much difference up against, like, no tail. Like, they wouldn't have found the kill, but they may have been able to force him to expend a fairy fire. So, our lanes we get is going to be a Chikiro versus a lone druid in the mid lane. Not something I thought I'd wake up to today. With the moon off lane Weaver against the safe lane Lifesteal and support slash harassing Nature's Prophet. I'm also going to take this moment as well to look to my production guy uh, to make sure our game sounds are at the, at the right level. Because uh, I don't know if I can actually hear properly in my headset, so we'll see. Our volunteers own. Shout out to them. They do. What a topsy-turvy situation they have to deal with, but... It's, it's a wonderful day. Yeah. We're, we're going to try and just focus on the Dota. That's what we're here for. And hopefully everyone at home is also able just to view and enjoy the games for the games. You're here for the do I'm here for the dumplings. I'm, I'm here for the Dota. But we're both yeah. here for technically one form of D. Yeah. Jakiro, I I played against a Jakiro the other day, STA. It's uh -huh. like the most annoying thing that I've ever had to play against in my life. Well, that was the old counter, right? That's what, like, like that was back when uh, TA was always around the mid and Dendi picked up the Jakiro and just went for the liquid fire dual breath. That was nothing I, I TA could do. I don't think it was Dendi, it was uh, Resolution. Was it Resolution? Dendi was the TA, Resolution was the Jakiro. I'm pretty sure. We'll turn to cap confirmation. Dendi was the TAA, Resolution was the Jakiro. It, 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 would, it, was it would have then been like IC Cup versus Na'Vi period, like we're talking like Starlight yeah, 3. Yeah, it was a while ago. So I, I'm not yeah. super familiar, obviously, with the Lone Druid versus Jakiro mid matchup. I assume Lone Druid does okay and Jakiro does okay. Yeah. It's A lot of it is, if you get root, life sucks. If you get rooted, life sucks. If you don't get rooted... But does, does it really sucks. suck that much? Because the bear harassment into a Jakira is not going to be that terrific. I mean, nobody likes getting rooted, man. You struggle. Yeah. But then if Miracle tries to go on it, you then just dual breath and liquid fire. That bear's going to lose a lot of life in the mid lane because it's just so easy to spam at its abilities. Yeah. I, I think the laning phase for Archon, they're optimistic. If it goes well, the laning phase, they're cool with it. If it doesn't, then they're all right too because they're just going to run at you at some point. Mm -hmm. Like Strats like this usually just rely on... Not being down 20 to 0 or something wow. stupid. Nice double stun there, Fly. Fluff took so much damage to try and harass Moon out then. But they can see everything that's going on. The Dire Sentry Ward from Archon's just out of position. So the Radiant Observer Ward, which is a little bit deeper inside the Dire Jungle, just sees everything. So they try and go on the Life Stealer, but uh, Fly wasn't really perfectly close enough to go for that stun. Yeah, he doesn't have Rage on J.O., but I doubt there's going to be much of a trade here. Right now, No Tail's being harassed out pretty hard by Mu. Looks like the Night Stalker and the Enchanter just kind of splitting XP and farm. The Enchanter's bringing a creep over. Well, so they're gonna... Thing. Nope. Crit. Monkeys. Uh, he's got an Observe Ward. He knows exactly where Crit's position is, so... He knows what he can get away with here. So he just Liquid Fires and Dual Breasts onto both Miracle as well as the Bear. Crit's looking for it, but... I think he's more just threatening to make sure that, uh... No shenanigans happen, and this bear oh, mid is there's your fissure block. getting pretty low. But there's there's no entangle. You do still, like, uh, the body block from crit. Have they got enough time? With the damage coming up from Miracle, the fairy fire has to be expended. And Monkeys is able to get himself back behind his tier 1 tower, now trigger off that freshly delivered salve. Yeah, that was a sick body block by crit. And he looks like he wants to threaten again, but the salve has done this job. There's no reason for him to throw it at that point. It's still really good harassment by the Earthshaker, coming to help out mid. Doesn't really have to do too much else. The bad rider is going to trade farm no matter what, so it's not too big of a deal. I'm wondering if Archon are going to switch out their lanes. Like once you hit that level level five on Jakira, do you push Fluff into the mid lane? Because you'll have Liquid Fire then. Like you could just technically force out another lane or give the extra levels to profit, so you get that push timing from Archon. Not sure. Oh, Maybe top lane. This is a big wraparound crit. He's got Fissure available, so he's gonna stun up on Fluff and stuff. Fluff, he's gonna start the TP. It will not be in time. First Blood is spilt by crit, and he should be able to get out safety. Moon may be a different case, however, being attacked by Wild Wings, and Lifestealer will get the revenge kill. So you trade your Nature's Prophet, which was the first Blood, 
onto an Earthshaker for your offlane Weaver. Definitely worth it for an OG if it comes to just gold uh, as a change. Or does it? I guess the Nature's Prophet has like nothing, but still, First Blood's always nice. It's a good morale boost too. Tell your team everything's going well, guys. Jo's really low and out of regen too. This is probably what matters more in the lane. Is that now he's just kind of stuck here until he can bury himself some regen, Toby? He's got one clarity from uh, from Fluff, but he needs he needs the HP. Yeah. With only like a one 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 so far, he doesn't really have a lot to grab. Yeah, I think this is like an offlane philosophy. It's like if you die, but you're getting XP and you're oh. forcing all of the oh goodbye mid. You are so dead. Hello and welcome to Savage Roar as well. Another control ability. It's just so much control from OG's lineup, and and maybe this is the time we also ask ourselves the question: like we're four minutes in, uh, Archon going to be happy with their lanes? Like obviously this top lane hasn't been the greatest of all. But how is mid and bottom lane looking for Archon and OG? Well, bottom lane's going amazingly well for uh, Team Archon. Is they're splitting up farm between their two heroes really well, and now there's going to be a rotation in the mid lane by the Night Stalker. But this is this should be super obvious for Miracle. The reason why Toby is you don't just vanish as a Night Stalker, and what are you going to go do? You're not going to jungle. Uh, they saw he didn't have Iron Talent, but they're going to spot crit here. If they can move, like, getting monkeys off the lane though is going to be really difficult without, like, flagging it, but bringing in fluff and stuff, that's a lot easier. Crit is looking for the denials of the Ancients, and he actually oh, does it too. That would have been so big as well for a Night Stalker. First night time, you try and go for a rotation, get a kill, but it fails. That's a level 3 Earthshaker too. It's not worth nothing. It's not like a level 2 hero or anything like that, but... Still not a bad rotation. Yeah, what I really like that Whitebeard did there is that he knew that the mid lane understood what was going on, and so he just booked it. And you're right though, there was almost no way that Monkeys Forever was uh, going to be able to moon? get there. Moon? A little bit too much damage, Jay was able to get enough life back again. The stun from Fly is too far away. Fluff's tree is trying to get in front of Fly to body block him out as Fluff and stuff's taking a little bit too much damage from the side creep wave, but Whitebeard's on the run. He's got boost for the movement speed, he's got it on Fly, especially now he gets the, the void off, and Fly, one attack. Actually hitting him from Whitebeard who gets himself a kill. So he still finds his first nighttime kill. And pretty much a solo attempt there from J.O. Punishing the overextension of the Weaver. Now the laning phase has gone really decently for Archon. They're hanging in, trading blows, but they're not really losing too much control out of the map or anything like that. The Batrider has hit level 6. Does have the Tranquil Boots. But the Blink Dagger timing's a lot further away. Like we're not looking at like that quick 8-9 to nine minute Blink Dagger. That's okay though. You're you are against a really tough lane, and the enchant controls your jungle anyways, so it's kind of hard. Just find a regen. Well, profit. <laughs> I was. It would have been a very greedy TP to come in from flop and stuff. Jo makes his way back top, but Moon is again. He's still finding levels, and it's really hard for the life oh, to trade blows. He's got no way out of this one. No Tail's gonna use that lasso, so you said he already hit level 6 with 3 sticky napalm charges over here on Mu, escaping out of this enchantress is practically impossible. No support's coming in to help him out either. So they just accept the fact the enchantress is down, and No Tail gets a nice injection of money. Yeah, the Batrider's amazing against the enchantress in that regard. Uh, mid, Miracle, switching into ulti form. He's still got voided up, but Whitebeard not having enough mana to actually follow through with... Uh... Actually, no, he did actually use the Crippling Fear too, but Miracle just got the ulti off in time. That's 600 HP left on that bear. There's almost no chance. I think even with the Night Stalker there, like the level 3 Void does do a pretty hefty amount of damage, but not nearly enough to cut through. And right now, things are... When it comes to overall laning phase, I think Archon, they're going to be okay with this, but Arc, uh, OG are going to be incredibly happy. Like They're getting a lot of farm on all three of their cores right now. Like Their Weaver is tops in that regard. And that's just because Moon, he's died. Uh, J.O. He's just trying to trade hits here. Yeah, uh, with the time lapse, he's able to do it this time around, but fluff and stuff, they're just getting the bugs off the back of Lifestealer. Well, look how annoying this is. Like, this is all Moon wants to do, is put a lot of the attention on himself at top. He's Crit. still getting CS. Perfect measure. No ways for monkeys to escape this one. He has no ice path level up. He actually went for... I don't want to dub it the Trixie build, but I've seen Trixie do this a hell... Uh, did Moon actually get stuck? 
<laughs> okay, he's gonna Shikuchi himself out of it. He got uh, trapped in by Triants. While Enchantress finds a kill on bottom lane, no tell on the run, and Pettis damage from Moo doing a lot of work, but Wipe is still gonna go down. Fluff and stuff brought in the extra support with the flame break, pushing back Moo as well as Fluff. Crit has that extra control from the totem, and that's enough to help him kill off Fluff, but Moo, he's coming back in for the kill on no tell. The trees are helping give the extra vision, so this Enchantress is getting a lot off the field at the moment. The bottom tower is also taking considerable damage because Moo has turned the Radiant Catapult into a traitor to attack into that tier one. Yeah, and they're gonna get this pretty soon. It's gonna be impossible for them to just entirely prevent this on OG, but you don't want to spend too much time at this bottom lane. The Batrider isn't worth hard committing for, because he's about to get uh, the Blink Dagger anyways. The more troubling thing for Archon right now is the fact that the Lone Druid now has a 8 minute uh, minus. minus plus boots on the hero, and he's about to get it on the bear as well. That timing is going to be sick because it forces Archon into this weird position. Tell me where they just have to like go, go, go. But isn't that that was kind of like their plan yeah, to start exactly. with? Like you don't pick up a Jakiro just because you want to like watch the like the grass go. Like they have to get into the fights. TP in mid by Crit. Crit is such a high level right now. He's six with arcane boots and 800 gold in nine minutes. He has a lot of farm. He's managed to find three kills with only one death. But Archon, after they take out that T1 tower, they actually establish a nice aggressive observer ward. So they saw Crit's movement, but they only got to do is to make sure they don't get caught out from the side. Like this kind of thing, like fly, <laughs> even his basic attack is taking forever. And Enchantress just turns. Moo with the sprites, Crit's gonna go for another control, but Fluff moving down, so is Wipe in. The Scarab Beetle's flying in behind from Moo, but it's not actually gonna find himself a target. So they'll get cleaned up. The Creepway's pushing into the tier 1 tower. Moon, he came underneath the sentry ward. They find him out because they have enough with the ice pump. The control, the oh, fissure, it bought enough space, allowing Moon to time lapse out and Shikuchi himself back into the lane. Wipe is sticking with him, but he doesn't have enough damage to finish the job. Meanwhile, on bottom, actually, it was mid lane, sorry. Miracle finished up the tier 1 tower. So OG remain alive, and this will end up being a tower trade. Plus some extra damage onto the tier 1 on bottom. That was fantastic team play by OG. They just kind of ring around the rosy uh, Archon repeatedly. And because this Earthshaker already have, has Arcane Boost, Sobi, you can just spam out the Fissure, no problem, and slow down this push. You're not supposed to have this kind of timing, but he was so successful around the map. 3 1 and 3, that one death being the Ancients, and they're going to find No Tail on their side of the big camp, but not going to be able to take him down. And uh, OG are just. They're just trying to create space and time and make every single one of these towers just take a really long time to take. And once Crit gets this like 13, 14 minute blink dagger like I anticipate, things are gonna get so dangerous for them. Like I have a crack at the bear. A little bit more damage to finish him off. Slundroid, no, there is a resummon, so it's all right. So I kind of taken out, like it's a little slower than I thought the Archon push was gonna be. I was actually expecting this tier one tower to be gone already. Uh, like like 10 minutes in, like have all the tier 1 towers removed, but they're only a minute behind that. But after you've taken out these tier 1 towers, can they quickly move into Roshan, or can OG contest this? I'm, or does OG even want to contest this? I don't this? think OG needs to really contest anything. I think they just get an equal amount of space on the map, and they're okay, and they'll look for the individual pickoffs. Like, J.O. right now is holding the 4 mid, but I think this would be a really good opportunity for OG to just uh, roll in and kill him really quickly, and slow down the push even further. Whitebeard's even coming in to deal with Moon, but they have time, no though. control of their jungle. Yeah, this is pretty scary, but at bottom. Uh, no tell? Actually blinked himself into that. The ice path well off target there from Monkey. So he doesn't get the control from that, but it's Moon being initiated on until the Shikuchi's away. Whitebeard unable to get that silence off in time, but it's still, it's, it's daytime. Like, it doesn't really pack the same punch. Yeah, and this is their strategy. I don't know if this is the ideal scenario for it, just because OG are getting so much around the map right now. Like, this Miracle Lone Druid already has 2,000 gold, and his Midas is about to be up right now again. You know, he'll just Midas another the creep, get even bigger. They can't really deal with him because they don't have the control factor, Toby, to mm -hmm. kill a 1,500 HP bear. If you want to do that, uh, the issue is it's going to cost you so much. Like, you're going to have to bring minimum three heroes, and if it fails, then you've just wasted your timing. So you kind of just have to ignore this guy and let him do what he wants and kind of execute your own strategy. The problem with that is that everyone's getting so far. Oh. You see Crit, he has a Blink Dagger in uh, 13 minutes. If they take this top tower, he'll have it. So I think Archon just has to kind of say, all right, that really sucks. OG kind of understand what's going on. Let's just go for our strat anyways. Oh, they're doing it. 
but it's a straight trade off. A tier 2 tower on the top lane for the tier 2 tower on the bottom lane. Fortification from both teams will be burnt. But OG fighting into this bottom, maybe not the greatest idea in the world. So, yeah, they just. Yeah, it's just straight off traits. There's that blink tag you're talking about. And OG, like, I thought their mid game would come up, like, around the 20 minute mark. Like, they'd find a lot of strength. But because they've taken, like, three towers already. Then, and not to mention some decent kills onto onto heroes like Earthshaker. They've got a lot of these core items already up and running. Yeah, they don't know about the blink dagger either, though. Crit. This might make a pretty big difference. He elected not to show it at this bottom lane. This mid lane, No Tail's just kind of fire flying around, trying to slow things down. They've got the perfect lineup for this. They don't have enough control factor to kill Moon either, so he's flitting around, buying time as Miracle gets closer and closer to this game breaking radiance. Is that Roshan? I was, I was thinking. Uh, well, we knew it was coming anyway. Murder through Floss build. Like, trick a hard scent. Like, we got ourselves the Blade Mail build coming with the double null talismans from Fluff. The thing is, I don't really think OG even care about Roshan, Toby. Normally, what ends up happening with Roshans is okay, who gets the Aegis? Why does it matter? Yeah, but but, but like... when you get a blink dagger from a crit, like there's no reason why you can't try and contest this. Yeah. Like, you you just... know it's coming, so... The blind echo here would be pretty massive. Oh, they're, they're all gonna stacked look for... up. The smoke's gonna break. Oh, actually the flame break. Whitebeard, he's on the cliffside. He starts his TP out right now. There's no tell, jumps in. They start the firefly, the echo's temp. They just explode, Moo. And then monkeys will also get clipped as the Jakiro. He's gonna ice pump nothing and also macrify nothing. The dual breath is able to reach down a little bit further, but with the fissure, Fluffer stuff can't even TP himself out this. Fly will die, but Moon is able to time lapse out all the damage being done. It's currently a two for one trade as Moon gets away on 27 HP. Running away to safety, no tells now able to blink himself out. But a two for one trade off, Roshan is still alive. But Miracle was not, well, he wasn't even there. He took out the tier two tower on the top lane, he has his relic already, and he's halfway through his Radiance recipe. And applying pressure now, 15 minutes in to the tier three tower of Archon. No, Archon just don't have enough control factor to deal with all these heroes. The, the Batrider plus the Weaver are causing so much havoc right now. If there's like an MVP though, it has to go to like crit. He's just doing so much right now with this Earthshaker, and nobody from Archon can really respond because they, well, A, they can't kill Moon. Especially if he decides to go with something defensive. Grab a ulti orb on himself, probably pick up Manta or Lincolns, and then Archon, what are they meant to do? They still have to deal with this Lone Druid at some point. Like, for the most part, they've just ignored this hero entirely. They're like, yeah. okay, we accept that you're gonna farm Miracle. It kind of feels like we... a cardinal sin that like Lone Druid is the one here, you, like, well, one of the big heroes you never want to ignore. But what are you supposed to do? You have this pre-built strategy and you're going against the lineup that features so much uh, mobility and crowd control. Well, then the only other option is you just gotta keep forcing the issue, push yeah. down towers, right? That's what I mean, but they went for the Roshan. It just took them so long. They have to kill No-Tail here. This would be pretty massive for him to get away. Ah, uh, they've got him. Murata pick up another kill onto that Enchantress. Yeah. This Lundred's about to get his Radiance though and make life incredibly painful for Archon. They don't have a mech or anything. They do have the heal from the Enchantress, but at some point it's just not going to be enough. He has like 800 flat HP. You get hit by like one Fissure and let the bear survive for longer than 30 seconds and all of a sudden you're donezo. Oh, we might actually have ourselves a team fight brewing on bottom lane. Monkey says he's himself a TP scroll. Um, not actually the item I thought he was going to go for first, the Rod of, the rod of Atos. Kind of thought he's gonna buff up his damage a little bit more, but now Whitebeard runs forward, tries to go for that silence. I actually jump out with the life stealer, but he was way too far away to really stop amping. And with no stuns, Lone Druid can just TP away. They'll be able to pick up the bear, which is a nice little consolation prize. Uh, but Miracle just instantly resummons. The T1 tower remains alive for Rakon. But they can't counter push from here. The T2 tower is already lost, and look at Crit, he's watching them walk into the pit. And he jumps, the Echo Slam, where'd the Fissure follow? He just TP's out, or maybe he can't, not anymore. He actually gets ice passed up, so he cannot complete his TP. All right, Kurt, that was... <laughs> um, did, he thought he, did he think he had just had more damage? Or friends? I, I, that was pretty funny, he just, he kind of just went in, he's like... And then he instantly TP's, I don't think I've ever seen that before. His invis was running out, so I think he wanted to do something with it, but... <laughs> maybe not even the idea. It seemed a little odd. I I don't think it really matters though, because again, I, I know it sounds like I'm being biased for OG, I'm not. That was the stuff for Archon, but you just have to worry about this Radiant Cylindruid. Mm -hmm. There's not much to say about this cast, except 
what will happen when Miracle starts to finally enter fights. Yeah. But you can only ignore this hero for so long. Like, what, look what he's doing. He's cutting waves with his bear. He's making it difficult for Archon to respond around the map. We've seen how much trouble Archon's already had with the control factor this game. Like, they're gonna go for a smoke ink, but I almost just feel like their timing is just kind of not panned out. And now it's this life stealer is in this weird position or oh. he's a life stealer core against two control heroes. Moon comes over. It reveals out monkeys as uh fly. He's gonna get silenced up for now, so there's no finger of death. The ice path well off target again from monkeys, but the sentry wards are down. Moon is just gonna just time walk himself out of this one while no tell dragging back on Jay or the Macropies in a nice position, but really it's not doing anywhere enough damage. The bugs were all over Archon. They're just trying to escape out of this. Moose stunned up and controlled by Fly. Extra fissure control. They are trying to slowly bring down this enchantress. Obviously, she is the untouchable, but uh, right now she is completely touched out in the in the uh, jungle. So four heroes down for Team Archon. Nice Sock is the last one to survive. He's still a long way off completing up this Aghanim scepter, and OG is going to capitalize on a, on a well well done fight. Yeah, they're going to again, and this is the first fight that they took five on five, and they Archon was struggling to win four v five fights. Then you add in the by far highest net worth here on the game. He's already at 10k net worth. The next highest is 6k on the side of Archon. This, uh, the fight was just never going to go oh. well. Wipe it unwillingly coming into that with a four star. They're going to turn around this fight. They've still got the Scarab Beetles on him. So that negative armor is a, is a big problem, but J.O. just chasing down Fly under the cover of the Rage. He was able to get the kill, but OG still have taken that merely Rax on the top before the 20 minute mark. And it doesn't look like there's an easy way for Archon to try and get any kind of exit kills onto OG. Yeah, they got what they came for. In fact, is OG gonna... Oh, they just saw Moo. Moo should get out of there. The Batrider still has Lasso. Moon's gonna find a kill on Whitebeard if he's well, if he's lucky. Yeah, he turns for the Beatles. Uh, this nice Stalker should be dead. Moon's still got time left as well as 17 one charges available. So the TP from Fluff for stuff actually doesn't help at all. In fact, now Fluff's got the Scarab Beetle on the back of him. Turns the Blade Mail on, so Moon was actually killing himself at that point. He's forced after way by No Tell out to safety. There's No Tell also blinks himself out for crit. Okay, that one's gonna work, and again, he does the same combo! <laughs> Just a blink into an Echo Slam, finds the kill and tries to get away scot free, but uh, they do take his life. Casual TP out, but again, it's, it's like, what? You need your kills to mean objectives if you're the side of Archon. For OG, the objective is completely different, Toby. You're okay with just getting these random kills because it slows down the timing. Like, that's the objective here. Yep. Whereas for Archon, if you get a kill on a hero, like on a key hero, the point is you want to take something more with it, but you can't because you're taking fights on your side of the map. All the while, you're not farming anything. The Lone Druid continues to farm out your jungle. Moon is just being the most annoying person in the game right now to Archon. Like, at this point, they hate this guy because they just haven't been able to kill him very frequently. Remember, he died twice in the laning phase. Hasn't died yeah. since. Is in the middle of fights, throwing out bugs, right-clicking people, well, they seem to just get all the, the space. Map. Like when Archon was pushing, OG was doing the same, and they just kept dodging Archon's attack. Uh, this Archon attack may have been so much more effective if OG was willing to come into a team fight, but they just dodged. Yeah. And Archon never attacked the high ground. Like the first attack into high ground came from OG. How are you meant to, though? They went for the Aegis. Like, unless you just five man in, but you don't want to do that until you got like the Aghanim Scepter on Nice Dogger, right? Or yeah. Because you didn't just get caught out by Bat Rider. It's not even that. You needed the Aegis, but they couldn't get the Aegis just because OG understood. There's, they're like, there's no way these guys can kill us. <laughs> so does that actually make the Echo Slam even more next level? Because that Echo Slam and death, even though we didn't find a kill, he stopped Roshan from happening. Now J.O. going to get dragged back out. The Finger of Death, the follow-up Hex, Fly still holding onto the stun. And with the extra Fissure, they have more than enough damage to kill off J.O. Fluff and stuff. That's a bit of an obvious ward being placed down as he tries to, well, Blade Mel kill off OG. With the Wrath of Nature kicking in, he almost killed off no -tell. The attack from the tower was kicking over, but... No tail survives on 45 HP. Oh, Miracle's getting really low. <sighs> oh, with the flame break kicking in. Moo's already dead. Like, he's got sprites, but they're not going to do enough heal. Fly, actually, oh, okay. With a liquid fire attack, if the Trin's going to attack him once more, he should die from this. Uh, okay, he went down to 6 HP. With a stun, he'll get rid of that creep, and another four heroes dead for Archon. The timing window has effectively been slammed shut by OG. Miracle almost has an Assault Curse, so even the Untouchable from the Enchantress doesn't slow him down very much, and they're just going to mow down everything now. The Enchantress does, doesn't have enough HP to survive, they don't have a mech carrier or anything like that. They no see no tell. They're waiting for him to fall stuff up so they could jump out, but can they reach him? Oh, no. no, they can't! 
Oh my! That's... <laughs> Tonight, the post... Did Jo... Did you... I don't know if Jo's uh, infest actually did any damage to him either. But either way... Everything they're doing is getting denied at every turn. Whitebeard's really trying to force the issue on Moon, but Moon's already got a Lincoln Sphere. So Whitebeard's initiation now is... it's not enough. Move right now. Just trying to push out this top lane that has already been raxed, and Miracle is just. You know, he's playing RPG. Just telling himself, guys, I I'm having a great time. Just continue to farm. <laughs> been untouched. Nobody's really doing anything against me. 5 0 and 3, level 16 at 23 minutes. Is this Archon trying to go for a smoke row, Sean? No, I think they're actually trying to fight them. If I, get, I, I uh, so, think yeah, the line, the line's been drawn to loop around the back yeah. from Fluff. There's so no the Firefly starts, there's no vision here. Okay, now the like the Observer Ward, like no tell just came in range for that, so they loop around the back. Like this is a very si like similar situation to a play, you're just missing the Enigma in this game. Uh, and Crit is in a perfect position to the tree. Like, OG seem to have read this perfectly, so no one's defending the top lane, no one's defending the bottom. They ice pass into the tree line to just try and find him a crit with a double fissure. Obviously the raged up life still not affected by this, but Moon's in the middle of the fight, again getting multiple heroes with his Scarab Beetles. Propus, a Fluff's just trying to TP out, ends up being cancelled out by the Savage Roar, and that's just going to be two heroes down. This may be the game with Crit jumping in with a follow-up fissure. It's a double kill for Miracle. Moon's down and good game well played. Under 25 minutes, Archon. They will lose game one against OG. They went for the play, they went for some kind of push strat, but uh, at the end of the day, it failed the timing. They couldn't get Roshan, they couldn't keep the pressure up. And OG triumph. I, the strategy was kind of neat by Archon. I was actually really excited to see it. Just OG had such good lanes. Crit's rotations into the mid lane made the things, made the game so much easier for Miracle. For me, he's probably the man of the match. Just his rotations were able to create some mistakes. You look in Miracle score and the amount of net worth that he has, it's easy to say, okay, this guy was clearly the carry, but it's the Earthshaker that enabled all of this to happen, I think. Man, it's, uh, it's a solid performance from OG. I don't think anyone really expected anything less, and a creative draft from Archon also. Series going as expected so far, but this is a full...